If you have your Bibles and would like to follow along in the chapter of Matthew, chapter 1, put a bookmark there. We'll be back to it two more times. Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. But after Joseph had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. I have a bit of a problem with some of the Christmas cards I see. You know, on all the Christmas cards, guess who gets to hold baby Jesus? Mary. What about us dads? You know, I mean, when Linda delivered safely our firstborn son, and he was healthy, she was all aglow. You know, they, they talk about that. You know, she was happy to have survived. No makeup, but a lovely, warm look on her face and, and just happy. And, and she was holding the little baby. And she said, here, hold your son. And, and, and I look like a doe in the headlights, you know. What do I do with this? And, and I, I tried not, you don't want to drop the baby, you know, in your first. And, and I tried to. And I thought, a very private thought, husbands, don't ever say this to your wife. I thought to myself, Bill Cosby was right. Newborn babies look like lizards. <laughs> what is this? And then she said something to me. She said, kiss your son. <laughs> I hadn't kissed a boy since my dad made me kiss my brother as punishment <laughs> for fighting. So I, I kissed my son on his forehead. Man, I'd give a, I'd give a hundred bucks if I could do that today. He's 27. I know Joseph was there as a loving father. I know that because as I read in the Bible, Joseph let his heart be warmed by God's love and God's direction. And at Christmas time, I, I need that love to be warmed and ignited in my heart. How about you? Are you loving? Do you accept the Christ? Are you carrying the Christ in your heart where it matters most? How do we let our love grow? It begins by accepting the call of God. You also are chosen for this. And now I believe... The choral will sing still, still, still with Silent Night.
Matthew chapter 1, verse 24, it says, Joseph woke up. He did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, took Mary home as his wife. I was a youth pastor near San Gabriel Academy, and three blocks away, one day I had to go and help a young 17-year-old tell an 18-year-old woman's mother she was pregnant. And when she finally caught on, because we had to break the news slowly, when she finally caught on, she curled up into a ball on her sofa and cried. The young man got up and went outside. He was crying. You know, sometimes a baby coming is wonderful, and sometimes it isn't. And sometimes you have doubts. What do you do? What do you do when you have to say, Guess what? I'm pregnant. Joseph didn't want to believe Mary. He had to make up his own mind about that. And so the angel was sent to let him know that this is of God. Wake up, Joseph. Do what the angel of the Lord commands. You see, folks, love sometimes is a decision that we have to make. Love sometimes is not an emotion that carries you through. Sometimes it's a, it's a decision that we make following God's word, following God's command, and then the love will come. The emotion. The feeling good. Sometimes that happens after and not first. How about in your heart and how about in mine? Would you like to follow God's call in your life? You see this Christ story. You know of the baby that was born. And like Joseph, Joseph had to weigh up a lot of things. The baby's future, his future. What would it be like day after day to be accused of breaking Mary's mother's heart? What would it be like growing this child up in this home? And we have those decisions to make too. I suggest that we listen to the command of the Lord. This is my son, my beloved son. Listen to him. The Corral's next uh, number, I believe, is Born on Christmas Day.
Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Have you ever thought about the road that Joseph had to take? I mean, it's bad enough to take a pregnant woman all the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem, and they probably walked. I, that's what the commentators say. Probably walked. You ever take a pregnant, okay, you've been a pregnant woman walking somewhere? Try to take a pregnant woman walking somewhere all the way to Bethlehem. And then, no, you don't get to go home. You get to go to Egypt. I feel sorry for Joseph. You know, you, sometimes as, when you become a father, you have to do things that you don't like. But you know, this world has handed us some pretty tough surprises sometimes, right? Suffering from things, cancer, disease, old age. And then yesterday we got this news about children. Children being killed. Children? Six and seven. What have they done to anybody? And of course, we, we as believers, we just kind of think about that passage we just read where there was a wicked king that decided that all the two-year-olds and lower in Bethlehem would be killed. The people who have excavated Bethlehem have discovered that that village of a few hundred people would have held about 18 to 20 children that would have been killed that morning. And you know, there's your choice right there. Are we going to love God or be of this world? <laughs> I don't want to be of this world. I am not of this world. Jesus was not of this world, and I don't want to be either. A place where children like this are killed. Those are our choices. And I, I think sometimes the devil overplays his hand and shows us just how ugly and mean life can be. I want not this life. I want eternal life. How about you? Are you ready to make your choice for the Savior today? We're going to think about this for a while as the chorale, is, oh, the octet is now singing. They have a medley of Christmas carols.
叮当叮当叮当叮当叮当。
I went to the principal's office to stop in when I was on my way to see my son. And the principal said, you know, your son's getting some really high grades. And, uh, you know, I, I think your son has what it takes maybe to go to Harvard. You see, I, I had gone to San Gabriel Academy, and I didn't get good grades, but I graduated from there 40 years ago, 41 years ago because of San Gabriel Academy, and a Bible retreat that I went on, I gave my heart to Christ. I became a Christian. And so when the principal says, your son can go to Harvard, I, I shook my head and I said, can he go to heaven? Can, can, please, can my son go to heaven? Because that's what I want. And when I hear the, the, well, when my sons went to San Gabriel Academy and sang in the choir, we're all basses. <laughs> I, I, I would get a lump in my throat, tears in my eyes. Oh, Lord, let them mean what they're singing. You know, let them be Christians. There, there's so much ahead in life to choose. Some will be good and some will be bad, but please choose Christ. And, and so every time San Gabriel Academy comes to a church where I'm at, I want to know, how are the kids doing with Christ? And so Mrs. Hunt asked for two. Do you want to introduce them? Or should, I, should I? Go ahead. You know them better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, two seniors will be sharing their testimony with you. Uh, Irish Pito Onan and your very own member, Matthew Moran. Irish and the thing that I like about San Gabriel Academy is that it's a Adventist school and that not only can we be able to express our religion publicly because all of us have the same religion also we can experience different things that we can learn and we can incorporate God in all that we do and even in our tests and quizzes and whatever problems that we have, we can incorporate it. And one more reason that I like going to an Adventist school is that we become educated in the Bible, like for example, the fundamental beliefs. And I believe that one of the greatest tools that Satan um, brings against us is deception. And the thing is, if we go to an Adventist school, we become educated more about the Bible like for example the state of the dead in the fundamental beliefs which has that the dead doesn't know anything but the thing is satan's deception is that he says that dead loved ones appear to people and that many people get deceived by it and so i feel like now that i'm coming out of an adventist school i can be able to um face more challenges and I know that I can hold on to the truth and the beliefs and the principles that I have learned in an Adventist school and that I can be able to help others to strengthen their faith and also help them to to overcome the deceptions that Satan has, um, that he has on us or, yeah. Happy Sabbath. Um, as most of you know, I'm a senior and um, you know I'm really thankful for my parents for putting the investment in me to have me in Christian education throughout my life. Um, I just came to San Gabriel like last year, but I've mainly been in a Christian environment, and I'm really thankful that they did that because um, there's a Bible verse in Proverbs that goes something like, you know, um, train up the child in the way that he should go and he won't ever leave it. So um, when all of us, when we were put into like Christian education, um, we were getting the seed of Jesus planted into our hearts. And that's what happens at St. Gabriel with all the teachers. They all um, plant like little seeds of truth and little seeds of um, the gospel in our hearts. And then as we grow older and then when we like go off into our life and maybe in environments that are Christian, um, we'll still have that seed in our hearts and uh, it'll blossom into eternal life. So I'm really thankful for St. Gabriel Academy and for all the teachers. So it's a good experience.
Uh, our last song is called Coming Home, and I would like to introduce our soloist, Kayla Canteris. <laughs> 